now we are going to discuss uh, the topic uh, development of language skills uh, there are four uh, development of language skills we have uh, listening speaking reading and write writing so here now we are looking into the uh, skill of uh, reading so as a individual everybody is going to read the textbooks or newspapers or articles journals whatever it may be so these are especially for the purpose of uh, pleasure so the textbooks are giving uh, the textbooks or not only the textbooks story books or uh, novels these all giving us the pleasure so once we have the habit of reading textbooks automatically it is giving lot of ple pleasure for us in the same time it is giving lot of knowledge so so that the individual is going to become as a knowledge source the next one uh, for survival so as a human being we are in the society so to survive in the society we have to look into so many areas like the development of science and technology how the country is developing and what are the developmental activities were taken place these all will be considered and the next part is talking about the academic part so this academic part we are we have to concentrate on the textbooks so the textbooks are a source of the knowledge and at the same time along with the textbooks we have to look into the other information we have to look into library or we have to look into the internet sources these all making us uh, or giving lot of knowledge towards the academic part the next one as a individual we are in the different professionals so as a professional we should be thorough with all our professional skills then only we are going to get reputation in our specific profession so the next we have to look into the topic uh, skill of uh, reading so here there are different types of readings like uh, skimming scanning and uh, intensive reading extensive reading reading aloud silent reading and these all the different types of reading so coming to the first one uh, we have to read the textbook the first one is called as the type uh, strategies of reading skimming so it is a very good exercise to get a global idea or summary to understand the thematic pattern so the skimming process in the process of reading it is a good exercise to get a global idea or summary to understand the thematic pattern once you are looking into the textbook once you are uh, you want to read the novel or when you want to once you want to read the fiction or whatever it may be first of all it is giving the global idea what exactly the book was saying and what type of book it is and the summary looking into that it is going to give a good exercise for us based on the summary we have to look into that areas and it is making us to understand the what exactly the thematic thematic patterns were introduced in that so the summary is a source or a, which is giving good exercise to get the idea of total book so this process is called as the skimming means it is making the individual to get summary from that book next one is scanning so especially it is useful for the world cultivating for its own sake so this is also one of the strategy which we are looking into the cultivating of one's own sake you want to prepare an uh, you want to write any book or you want to prepare an article on your own just naturally we have to look into so many books so by looking into or by referring so many books automatically you have to concentrate on what exactly you want to write or what exactly you want to focus by collecting all the information from all the different sources you are making into just you are making into the gist form scanning whatever the words you required whatever the sentences you required based on that you yourself are going to cultivate your own so this is this strategy is called as the scanning next one we are reading in the in the form of intensive reading so in general the pupil read not only for detailed comprehension of meaning but also for the mastering the structure and the vocabulary so this process is making the individual to read with thorough reading with understanding reading with comprehension once the learner or the once the pupil reads the textbook for what purpose just to get mastery of the structure and vocabulary once they have the habit of reading with understanding or reading with comprehension definitely it is making the students or it is making the learner mastery of the structure and vocabulary once they have the command over mastery of the structure and vocabulary definitely they are going to represent it in a proper way and as well as it is in a systematic manner 
this type of reading is called as intensive. So, intensive is making the learner or the child to get mastery of the structure and the vocabulary. Next one is extensive reading. So, this is used for developing a taste for uh, reading and making the learner an independent reader. So, this uh, <coughs> extensive reading is developing taste for reading making the learner an independent reader. So, automatically it is making as a habit of individual as a good reader. So, this is an independent reader. Next one is uh, reading aloud. So, by reading the textbook or by reading in the initial stages as a learner, they have to read with a loud voice, reading aloud. So, even in the classroom also the English teacher has to make the student to read the lesson. So, the last 5 minutes should be allotted for read, read the lesson with a loud voice. So, why exactly they need the loud reading means here, then only they are going to know how exactly they are pronouncing the word. So, once the clarity over the words, then only they are having the ability to speak out. So, the reading aloud is making an individual to become an effective device for quick testing of reading comprehension and for improving communication. So, here once they are having the habit of reading aloud, definitely they are going to know how exactly the word they have to pronounce and the same time where they have to give proper stress pause and intonation. So, based on that the sentence or the words are going to become very clear to the others. If the, it is not clear to the individuals definitely there is a communication gap. So, this loud reading especially in the learning stage it is very important one to come out with all these problems. Next one is silent reading. So, in the classroom after completion of the lesson, the teacher definitely they have to make the student to read the lesson with silent reading. So, the silent reading is promoting the better understanding of the text because the focus is only on the content. By the silent reading, it is going to be helpful for the individuals like uh, it is making the individuals towards the intellectual ability as well as it is making uh, knowing the importance of uh, literary and it is making the individuals to learn the linguistic pattern. So, this loud reading is coming to know how exactly the word should be pronounced whereas coming to the silent reading it is promoting for the better understanding of the text because if they want to concentrate on if they want to focus on only one content definitely they have to go for the silent reading. So, by going for the silent reading it is going to be develop the intellectual ability and it is going to know the importance of literary as well as the linguistic pattern. So, this is also one of the pattern of uh, reading. So, along with this we have the sub skills of reading. So, in this recognizing words and phrases in English script. Once they have the habit of reading textbooks, definitely they are going to recognize the words, phrases in the English script. If they do not have proper reading habit, if they do not have proper uh, reading ability, they cannot recognize the words in a proper way. So, to get perfection with the recognition of words and phrases, they have to look into the textbooks with comprehension, reading with comprehension. So, the comprehension is making the students to read the textbook with thorough and understanding. If the understanding of the text is very clear, if the understanding of the sentences are very clear, then they will recognize the words, phrases in English script. So, based on that they are going to speak out means here the recognition of the words and phrases are making the student in a confidence to speak out the word, extracting specific information for summary. So, once they are reading with the thorough, definitely they are going to give proper information, they have proper summary. So, whatever the teacher had assigned the work to the student definitely they are in a position to express in the form of summary. So, after the class definitely the teacher is going to ask about the gist form of the class. So, here once they are uh, having a habit of reading and listening with a proper definitely they will uh, show interest to give the summary of the whole class. So, this is also one of the sub skill of the reading. Next reading sub skill is uh, reading silently without moving this is also one of the good habit of the 
reader. While reading, usually the student will uh, read with loud voice. Just you uh, imagine the primary level, just the students are uh, without uh, knowing the meaning or without understanding that they are going to uh, read like poems or the rhymes. Without understanding only they are going to by heart the poems or the rhymes. Whereas coming to the secondary level, here the student have the ability to understand, the student have the ability to read, speak, write and listen. So here the reading with a silent means when you reading to the textbook when you are sitting in library just you have to go for only the silent reading. So, so that it is not going to be disturbed with anyone. This is also one of the good habit of the uh, reader. So, to become a good reader not only having habit of uh, reading more number of books, silent reading is making more comfortable to others. Next one is knowing how to use an index, a table of the content. So, once we have the habit of uh, reading skills, definitely we have to look into the index, how the textbook is. We have to look into the areas like uh, how the textbook uh, is, it is consisted with how many pages and it is consisted with uh, types of pictures and it is consisted with the cover page, index, authors and these all uh, footnotes, these all we have to look into that. So, once the student or the learner is in a position to having good habit of reading, definitely they are knowing the how to use an index table and the content. So, to use the index also we have to follow certain rules and regulations. To prepare a table, we have to in incorporate the data in a proper way, then only the table will be meaningful one and the content. So, where exactly we have to locate the content and what exactly should be there that should be in a systematic manner. So, these all we have to look into that. So, if you have habit of reading textbook definitely we have to look into all these areas writing skill. So, first we had uh, listening skill, speaking skill, write, reading and the writing skill. So, the listening and the reading skill or the passive skills, they are the receptive skills. Whereas, coming to the speaking and writing skills these are called as the productive or the active skills. So, the writing skill also the productive skill which involves and manipulating, structuring and communicating. So, whatever you learn, whatever you listen and whatever you want to speak and whatever the you read the different types of books you are going to write in the form of essay or sentences or you are going to inculcate in the form of words. So, the writing requires an orderly presentation of ideas, a planned movement from one idea to another. So, whatever you are going to write, the writing is required orderly representation, what idea you want to say that should be in a planned movement from one idea to another. So, as a learner you want to represent something that should be in a form of systematic, that should be in the form of order. So, for sake of that the presentation should be very clear, in that we have to look into what exactly the idea you want to focus and what are your plans and what are your movements, so these all should be very clear to the other, then only that will be very comfortable. So, in this writing part we have to look into majorly two areas, one is uh, coherence. So, as we know the coherence is giving a clarity of idea expressed in terms of their arrangements. So, the coherence is nothing but while you are representing something in the form of writing, it is giving clarity of idea expressed what exactly the writer want to say in the form of written form. So, it is giving clarity of idea which is in a coherence. Whereas, coming to the cohesion, it is talking about uh, the use of connectiveness, connectiveness within the sentences. So, you want to speak something or you want to write something, connectivity should be there. If there is no connectivity, automatically we may not going to get the complete understanding or complete meaning of that word automatically the terminology may not uh, easily understood by the other. So, for sake of that we need connectiveness. So, the connectiveness part is very important one within the sentences exactly how we have to start then how you are going to end the clarity should be there then only the others will be understand in a proper way there is no gap. So, next one is uh, types of writing. So, here we are going to write for different types. So, the first pattern of writing is uh, narrative writing. Usually, these used in the fiction 
it includes stories, autobiographies and etc. Here we just we can imagine one example of any fiction or any story or autobiography, just what exactly they want to say that will be narrated in a proper way by giving certain situations, by giving certain examples based on that it is making the writer in a proper way to understood in a easy manner for the reader that is the narrative writing. Whereas coming to the descriptive writing, so it provides information about events as well as the uh, people, concepts, things and places. So here you want to express anything or you want to describe anything for example as uh, your experiences uh, you went for any picnic or as your experiences you went for any tourist place. So you as an English teacher they may ask you describe about your field trip or describe your, about your excursion part. So definitely here the information should be provided in the form of descriptive. Here you cannot uh, describe your whole 2 days or 3 days trip within one, 1 sentence or 2 sentences. So here every from day 1 onwards till 2 days or 3 days program that should be described in a proper way. Then it is very clear. So in that description part we have to look into the, all the time being factors and uh, what are the events were taken place and uh, different types of concepts and what are the places you visited and uh, how you enjoyed these will be described in a clearly so that the others will understand in a proper way. <coughs> Next type of writing is uh, persuasive writing, writing and planning advertisements, brooches and etc. Coming to the narrative part just here they are narrating about the stories or autobiographies whereas coming to the descriptive part here they are describing whole trip or whole tour but coming to the this part it is talking about only planning of advertisement brochure. So the brochure is consisted with few content with few page, pages and even advertisement also consisted with few page or uh, few words. So within that few words only you have to make the others to understand means the writing what type of writing you have to incorporate in that what type of terminology it should be in included. So that should be very clear to the others. So then only that advertisement will get as success. So within those few words only the they have to understand that they are going they are going to give some advertisement to it so and so they are going to publish or they are going to give in a brochure on so and so area that should be very clear to the uh, writing. And the next type of writing is uh, called as the expository writing. So these expository writing uh, it includes that the facts, classification, definition. So for example if you want to give any classification of animals or if you want to give any classification of uh, living things definitely we have the complete clarity will be there by following the classification. If you want to give any differentiation between two things or three things then you can go for the classification part by giving into two tabular form or three tabular form definitely it is making the others to read or to write it in a proper way and simultaneously the three areas or four areas what you want to differentiate that should be very clear. So the classification is very important one and which is making the readers the others in a proper way with a short time. And by giving writing definitions that should be very clear and it is a fact one. Uh, according to as per Noam Chomsky he had defined that the language is nothing but it is in a biological fact how the, na how the nature in the nature how the human being from child how they are growing like language is also like that only it is a natural phenomena that was the definition given by Chomsky. So the definition as it is we have to keep that is the fact uh, coming to the science part. The, we have so many equations, so many experiments, so many formulas, so many fundamentals. These we have to keep as it is. Here we should not uh, incorporate or we as on our word words we cannot change the fact or the definitions. So this is uh, the other type of writing that is uh, expository writing. These are the different types of writing. So here uh, the writing should be very clear and it should be understood by the any other individual. So in this writing part we have to look into the process of writing. 
So, in this process just there are a simple way to understand the process. So, the first process uh, of writing is choosing the topic. First of all what exactly you want to write that should be very clear to the writer. So, means the topic. So, the topic should be very clear to the writer. So, it is up to the choosing of the topic. So, the topic should not create any contradictory or any conflict or any other dilemma to the writer that should be very clear and that should be very specific. So, that is the topic selection is very very important one. So, if we, if we want to purchase any book definitely we have to look into the what is the title of the book. If the title is very clear then if you are interested to purchase or uh, you are going to purchase otherwise we can we can't purchase the book. So, here to write anything or article or any book you have to look into the topic which is nothing but the choosing the topic. So, once the topic was selected by the writer, they must be in a position to have their own collective ideas, how exactly the topic is relating to the ideas. So, there must be in a correlation between topic and the idea. So, once the collecting ideas were proper and relating to the topic, next they have to look into the words. So, what type of terminology is comfortable? What type of words I have to incorporate or what type of words I have to add to this topic that should be very clear to the writer. If the words were not clear, if there is an ambiguity on the words, definitely the writer may not satisfy the readers. So, the, in this choosing the words are very important one that should be very known words to the readers. And the next one organizing the writing. So, these plan, this is process as called as the planning also. While you want to introduce the words or while you selected the words and while you selected the ideas, these should be organized in a proper way. So, the organizing the writings are very important one. So, as an individual everybody is a good writer, but here the organization of the writings are very important one. How we have to start, where we have to start and when we have to start and how it should be concluded. So, there will be a system, there will be a structure. So, based on that we have to look into the organization of the writings. Once the structure was organized in a proper way, definitely every individual are going to understand it in a proper way at any time. After this the organization of the events under the subtopics. So, here the topic should uh, whatever the topic you selected for that we have to organize an events, what type of uh, events you are going to plan and what type of topics are related to that, that should be very clear to the uh, writer. And the next one, of when it is clear to the reader, next, next they are going into the drafting part. So, this drafting is very important one and the next one editing. After drafting, the next process is going to be taken place editing. So, here uh, to collect the, you, as for your related topic, you are going to collect lot of information but all the information may not uh, incorporate in your writings. So, for that what exactly you required and what exactly the objectives and what exactly the topic is related based on that you have to look into that area of editing. So, once the editing is over then you are looking into the reviewing. So, after the reviewing process then what you are doing just you are redrafting and making a final copy. So, this is in a simple process uh, we have to look into the process of writing. First one is choosing the topic and the next process is once the topic is over next one is uh, collecting ideas. After the ideas you have to look into what type of words are suitable. After these words you have to organize the writings in a proper way or in a systematic way. Then the events what type of event or what way you are going to collect the information, what are the sources are there to collect the information, whether you are going to conduct any test to the students or whether you are going to interview any student that should be very clear. And the next one you are going to draft by collecting all this you are going to draft the information. After drafting next process will be editing, after editing you are going to review. So, after review and next that was the final stage of redrafting and making a final copy. So, whatever the corrections and whatever the modifications or whatever the editions will be done that should be in the process of editing and reviewing only. Then once the final copy was ready then it is going to be available and that should be have a good uh, market as well as that should be very clear to the readers. So, this is a process 
and the next we have to look into the sub skills of writing. So, to get the, our writing with a perfection, here we have to look into the areas like uh, mastery of spellings, punctuations, sentences. So, if you want to write any article, you need proper spellings, means here you should be thorough with the mastery spellings, mastery over the spelling. So, how you are going to get the mastery by reading so many books or by looking into so many text by looking into so many sources, whatever the sources are there to acquire the knowledge, those all the sources should be available, then only that is making us mastery towards the spelling. Next one punctuation, so these are very very important one giving the punctuations. So, in the proper time we have to give the punctuations, then only it is going to become as a meaningful sentence. If the punctuations were not clear, definitely the reader may not understand that in a proper way. So, the punctuations are very important one. Coming to the sentences, once you have the mastery of spellings, once you have the thorough with the punctuation, definitely the sentence is going to become as a 100 percent meaningful one. If there were no proper punctuations, the sentence may not in a proper way and the readers may not understand that sentence in a proper way. Next one is linking sentences and using connecting words. So, the sentence should be linked, how you are going to start for example, you want to give any one definition, first of all you have to look into the aspects of language for example. So, in these aspects of language what you have to do is uh, we have to look into the how the language was introduced and what are the different uh, developmental pro steps were taken place, what is the nature of language, then how the language had came into existence, what are the problems of language learning and what is the importance of learning, this is a procedure, this is a step by step or this is a uh, systematic pattern. So, here based on this we have to look into that uh, using connecting words and as well as the linking sentences. If there is no continuity or there is no linkage within one sentence or other sentence, automatically the meaning of the sentence will be not clear and may not understood by the reader. And whatever the linking sentences we have, the using connecting words should be related to that, the words should be connected to each and every sentence. The next one is organizing information logically and clearly. So, whatever the information you want to incorporate in the text or the in the form of sentences, that should be in the form of logical and it should be very clear. Then only the reader will understand your concept or the theme. Next one, using discourses um, markers appropriately. So, here uh, what type of discourses we are using exactly, those discourses should be appropriate, then only the reading should be very comfortable. Next one selecting vocabulary, so proper vocabulary and well known vocabulary should be introduced in the writings. If the vocabulary is not known, it is unknown vocabulary used automatically that should be giving gap to the reader and the writer. So, the vocabulary is a major part and the next one is expressing information in the form of explicitly. So, whatever the information that should be very clearly explained in the text that should give complete picture or that should give complete information in the expression information explicitly. Then only we have thorough knowledge over the content. If there is no explicit, if there is no analysis part, if there is no plenty of information regarding that particular area, definitely the readers may not accept that one. The next one is linking sentences which is very important one, again it is having link with the words. Next one is uh, evaluating the significance of words and sentences. So, here once we are introducing the sentences or once we are introducing the words that should be evaluated, that should be in what extent we are using that word, we have to look into the standard of the textbook, we have to look into the standard of the book or we have to look into the standard of the authors. So, based on that we have to use such type of words. For example, if you are writing in a book for the primary level, the words should be based on their usage, whereas coming to the secondary level, the word should be some extent standard word should be used, whereas coming to the sentences also those all should be very clear, then only they will uh, give importance to the reading of textbook. So, the 
writing is very very important one in all the areas. The next one is summarizing the whole text. So, the summary is very important one uh, that should give complete. For example, once we are looking into the textbook of any class, it is having an end of the concept and end of the content they have the summary. So, summary is a hardly a very few sentences which is giving whole picture of that, that uh, unit. So, it is giving whole text, it is representing whole text, but it is I had shown within a few sentences what we studied the total unit. This is a summarizing the whole text. Next one is elements of uh, good handwriting. So, by looking into this we are uh, looking into that the elements of good writing. So, here the first point is focusing on unity of ideas largely refers to good organization of the points. So, the organizing points are very important one for the good writer. So, unity of ideas largely refers to good organization of the points. Whatever the points you are going to introduce in the writing part that should have the clear idea and there should be a continuity and that should be referred one. That is the first element of the good writing. Next one is right words in right place. So, if you want to start to write an objective for example, the objective should be represented in the form of by using the first word to know, to identify, to refer, to understand, these are the words. So, once looking into the objective of particular topic, definitely it is going to start with the letter to, to know, to understand means here just you are in a position to learn, but whether you are going to achieve the objective or not before entering into that or before framing the objectives that should be written in the proper way. So, that it is indicating that you are representing something or you want to make something to achieve. So, the right words in the right place. So, the two should start with from to understand, to know, but understanding should be before two. If two added in the middle definitely it is not going to be uh, meaningful objective. So, this is the point for uh, right words in the right place. And the next one organization of ideas refers to linking of points in a logical manner. So, whatever the idea you want to represent that should be in the form of linkage, link should be there. If there is no linkage in the sentences, if there is no linkage in the words part definitely that is going to be disturbed. So, the organization of idea is very important one. And the next one writing should have a proper beginning, middle and conclusion part. So, obviously, every reader is going to expect the proper beginning, middle and the conclusion. So, as it is it should start from the initial that should be very effective beginning and middle what should be incorporated and what matter should be there in the middle. Whereas, coming to the conclusion part how they have to conclude these all should be very clear to the writer. Then only that book or the writing should be become as an effective writer. So, if anything is missing for example, instead of conclusion part if it is added in the end of uh, middle part then the automatically the book may not be valid or the book is not the worthy one. So, to write uh, any book we have to follow certain proper organization of the beginning and middle and the conclusion part. For, uh, for the effective communicative ideas we have to look into the content part, we have to look into the mechanics part as well as uh, purpose, what purpose you are uh, looking into that and what type of words you are going to give and what type of uh, grammar these all should be there in the mind and the same time aspects these also very important one and uh, grammar part. So, to write the uh, an effective writings we have to follow certain uh, mechanisms, mechanics of writing. So, good and good writing should have the qualities like distinctiveness that should be legibility and that should be in a simplicity, uniformity, spacing, speed and correctness. These are the mechanisms which we have to follow as a writer. So, in what extent it is going to be distinctiveness, in what it extent it is going to be worthy one, in what extent it is going to be give value to the reader. And the next one legibility the, that should be visible to each and every one and that should be valid by the uh, all the readers. The next one simplicity the usage of the words based on the standards, the usage of the sentences based on the standards of the 
book uh, based on the standard of the age we have to look into the aspects that is simplicity. The terminology should be very simple then only the reader will understand that book in a proper way. And the next one is uniformity. So, what type of spelling you are using, what type of uh, font size you are using, what type of text you are going to follow that should we have to follow the uniformity. So, this uniformity is making the book as one of the effective part. And the next one proper spacing. So, the spacing should be very clear. If it is without having space to one word to other word definitely it is not going to become as a meaningful one. So, the proper spacing where exactly space is required, where we have to give the punctuations, where we have to give the pause and where we have to give etcetera comma and all those that should be very clear. So, that the uh, reader will understand the concept in a proper way. And the next one speed. So, what way you are going to for example, if there is a legibility, if it is a simple language automatically the readers having more interest to read the book. For example, if the words were very tough words, if the words were not in a simple form, definitely they are not in a position to read the book with an uh, interesting one. So, automatically they are going to for so many breaks or it will take lot of time to complete the book. If it uh, you are for as a writer, if we followed certain rules and regulations, definitely the reading of the book will we are going to finish in a as early as possible. And the next one correctness. So, the terminology whatever we are using that should be in a correct one, that should be valid one. And so, the correctness of the words uh, is also one of the important mechanism while for the writers. So, we have to keep some points to acquire good spelling for the word keeping. So, here uh, keep a list of uh, troublesome words, so that it is not going to give any complex to the uh, reader. So, we have if we want to introduce such type of words whatever the other alternative word we have to keep in the mind and uh, all the times while writing the book we have to refer the dictionary as well as the thesaurus which gives uh, simple words and which gives the complete synonymous words which were acceptable by the uh, reader based on their standards that we have to keep in the mind. The next one use dictionary to confirm the spelling while writing we have to use the dictionary. So, the dictionary is one of the reference source for us to give complete uh, spelling as well as what way we have to use. For example, one word we can use uh, in the different forms. So, in one situation we are using the word in the other way, the other situations we have to use in the other form. So, here that dictionary is going to give confirm of the spelling. So, once we follow these instructions to uh, write the book, we are going to keep the spelling the correct one. The next one is learning basic spelling rules. So, while introducing this uh, based on the standard of the student, we have to look into the spellings as well as rules, where exactly we have to use such type of words and where we should not use these some rules, basic rules we have to follow for the uh, writing of the book. So, to make our book as an effective one already we discussed we have to focus on a few areas like uh, uh, commonly used punctuation marks. So, which is making the sentences or which is making the book as meaningful one based on the punctuations and proper vocabulary. So, these punctuations we have to if you want to close a paragraph or if you want to close a sentence definitely we have to use a end punctuation like a full stop. Otherwise, uh, if you want, if it is a form of like question where you are going, so definitely it is showing that it is a question form, it is a question mark. So, definitely that should be indicated in the form of question mark, that is end punctuation. So, by looking into full stop and by looking into question mark, the reader will come to know that this was end. And the next punctuation is talking about the comma, as we know comma means still it is there, means here you are not giving end punctuation, it is a still the continuation will be there. And the next one semicolon, if you want to continue with that one, just you are giving headings, you now the topic is you are going to elaborate that heading, you are going to give some semicolons. So, these are uh, very few commonly used punctuation marks while writing the any book. So, as now we discussed about the development of language skills, in this we are uh, discussed about the point like uh, especially focusing on the LSRW basic skills of language. 
so in this uh, we every individual or the every language teacher has to focus on these uh, basic skills of language listening speaking reading and writing so to fulfill these uh, listening speaking reading and writing skills as a major objective of the language teacher so they have to give more practice to the students then only the language is going to become as very effective so if the teacher had given proper instructions while listening to classroom or while speaking to someone else and while reading and writing definitely the student will follow the instructions of the teacher based on that they are trying to keep on trying to follow the same instructions which were given by the language teacher so here the language teacher has to make crucial role of this uh, english class so the english class is meant for 45 minutes or 50 minutes this time the teacher has to make the student to speak or communicate in english only then only the student were showing interest to learn the english language so here the classroom or the school is a platform providing or creating such type of environment to share their ideas because the classroom is in a very small platform they can express their own views with the because only few like peer group is available along with one teacher so that it is a good source to come out with their own ideas or the creativity levels so these levels were encouraged in the classroom so the classroom is uh, showing a important role in developing the language skills so as we know the importance of english language in our day to day life so these uh, skills are very very essential to learn or to speak or to get uh, something from others so here the information whatever they want to share they should have some proper message with them so that information is making them to speak uh, with the proper so if the sender or uh, the, if i am having any message with me definitely that should be communicated to the receiver in a proper way so for that i need some background i need some uh, i need some work means here uh, as my own i am going to prepare my own words as my own i am going to prepare my sentences so whatever the word sentences i am going to prepare that should be understand by the listener as well as that should be accepted by the listener so then only the communication will be successful if there is a gap of words or if there is a gap of sentences definitely the listener may not concentrate and they may not grasp you or uh, after listening after the process is over then they are having the question mark what i learned and what i listen what exactly the speaker expressed to us so these gap will be uh, possibility if the words and sentences were not clear by the sender so here to make uh, communication as an effective process the speaking is also one of the major area so once this speaking and uh, writing we are considering as the productive skills means here we are producing in the form of speaking if you listen something you are going to speak that is the production part means it which is nothing but the output whereas coming to the writing part whatever the textbook you read just you are going to write in the form of examination or in the form of essay or any other competition so that is indicating that is also one of the productive skill so we have to focus not only on the receptive skills like listening and uh, reading we have to focus on the productive skills like speaking and the writing so once the individual is having interest to learn then only they can speak and they can write so here we have to make the habit of reading more textbooks of in english so that should start from the initial from the primary level onwards so once we have to make them to read the textbooks or the story books in a proper way definitely it is going to become as a habit in their future for the secondary level as well as the higher education level so it is a good part of the learner so these learning making the individuals to build up their uh, confidential level so once they have thorough with the knowledge once they have a command over the speaking skill definitely they can face any type of situation so the speaking is going to give a good command or good confidential level in the society so automatically it is not going to become an a barrier to communicate with any other so this is the importance of uh, language uh, especially the speaking whereas coming to the reading and writing part as a reader we have uh, to follow certain rules and regulations so 
in general we are reading the textbook uh, or any other books for what purpose we are reading the books just for, to get the information or which is making us good friends for us as well as which is making us to give more and more information and to get uh, thorough knowledge over the that content definitely we have to look into so many textbooks or the any other related books which is making us as a good reader. So, to follow the certain habit of good reading definitely the writing of the book should be proper. So, the writing of the book is based on the writer. So, the writer has to follow certain rules and regulations or the certain fundamentals then only the reader will accept the book. So, for example, if you take the color of the textbook that should be very pleasant to the reader then only they will purchase the book otherwise simply they are uh, ignoring that book as well as uh, the sentences whatever they used as well as whatever the index they are using this font size the color of the paper these all the issues will be taken place by the reader once they want to purchase the book. So, these all the instructions we have to follow while uh, writing any textbook or while writing any article. So, here the writing of any article or writing of any book or uh, you are going to publish any uh, journal, we have to look into the topic that should be very clear and uh, problem what you faced exactly. When you find any problem with that book, that area, then it is going to become as a problem that is that you want to express. So, to overcome that problem or to solve that problem, we have to look into areas like what type of words we have to use, what type of objectives we have to prepare and uh, how uh, I am going to get the information. These all the sources we have to collect. Later collection of the information, you have to look into the decoding process and you have to look into the editing process. Once it was edited, again you have to publish the book without having any uh, complications like uh, proper wording or proper sentences and these all we have to look into that. So, these all the um, major basic skills of uh, language and uh, we have to look into this and uh, these all the development of language skills, not only the basic skills, these all the development of the language skills. Once the individual or the child is uh, having thorough over this uh, basic skills of language, definitely they are not going to face any problem in the especially in the English language. So, here these uh, fulfillment of the basic skills of language is based on the uh, objectives what we framed before going to start the course or before going to start any program, uh, what exactly you want to say or what exactly you want to incorporate in the student that should be very clear to the students. Then only these development of language will be taken place automatically the learner is having a lot of interest towards learning the language. So, this is about the uh, development of language as well as uh, uh, instructions which we have to follow for certain uh, rules and regulations to prepare any book or uh, uh, to publish any book or if you want to go for uh, give any uh, publication or if you want to go for any uh, give any advertisement or brochure publication, we have to look into so many areas, then only that advertisement or that brochure is going to communicate the others in a proper way by keeping in uh, some fundamental uh, punctuations. So, the punctuations are making lot of uh, uh, information and uh, more comfortable to the uh, reader. So, by this we are going to conclude uh, the development of the language skills. Uh, 